Hi guys, welcome to iNetwork365 and in this video I will explain what is FSMO roles. Okay, so before I explain FSMO, I need to explain something called multi-master replication. Okay, so here you can see there are two sites, one is site 1 and one is site 2. So site 1 is in USA and site 2 is in UK. Now in between them they are connected through internet which is called site link. You can see here there is something called site link. Okay. So just we'll assume that DC1, the administrator in DC1, he has created a user account called user1. So what will happen immediately this user1 will be synchronized to DC2 and DC3 as well. And same thing applies to DC2. If I create anything here, it will be synchronized to DC3 and DC1 as well. So this is called intra-site replication. So same thing applies in UK as well. So if you create a user over here, it will be replicated to uh, DC5 and DC6. Now the problem comes when the same user account is created in both side. For example, we'll say that here the administrator he has created a user called user2. And the administrator in site 1, he also has created a user account called user2. So now what will happen is, since there are two same accounts in different location, at the time when they are synchronizing, the Active Directory database will have conflict because there are two duplicate names created. So to prevent this problem, what Microsoft has done, they have introduced FSMO. So in FSMO, there is five roles. So each role has its own duty. For example, if you take uh, a school, in school you might have maths teacher, science teacher. So each teacher, they have their own duty. So same thing applies in FSMO. Okay, FSMO stands for Flexible Single Master Operation. So under FSMO, there are two levels. One is forest level. And another one is domain level. Under forest level, you will find schema master, domain naming master. And under domain level, you will find rig master, PDC emulator, and infrastructure master. So next I will explain what is this each roles are used for. Okay, so next one is schema master. So schema master is a collection of class and its attributes such as employee name, phone number, login name. Uh, so class means uh, in schema is like it's a common word used for uh, accounts such as user account, computer account, group account. So these things comes under class and attributes means in user account you can add uh, like employee name, department, their phone number, same like in computer account also you can add some uh, details so these things are known as attributes so let me show you in the server the schema master and the attributes okay i will go to the active directory okay so in here uh, if i want to explain uh, regarding uh, class it can be user account group account and also computer account and attributes means if I open user account you can see here there are some additional informations which I can fill uh, the address account details profile telephone number so these all the things are known as attributes so same thing applies to the group account as well and computer account so if I double click computer account here you can see there are some additional informations which I can fill so these are known as attributes and also if you want to view schema master uh, there is one command which you can execute so please know that by default the schema master is hidden so to unhide the schema master you have to go to run and you have to execute this command okay so this command I will list in uh, my description uh, on how to uh, unhide the schema master so after typing this command click ok 
so now you can see there's a message which is displaying that it succeeded so now the schema master is unhidden so what I will do again I'll go to run and type MMC and I'll click OK so from this window I'll click file add remote snap in then I'll expand this and here you can see schema master so I will click add and OK so now when I double click schema master you can see there is classes and attributes so if you go to classes we can see a group account then you can see computer account and also you can see user account so there are more things which is coming under class so these are the three main things which I have showed you and the other thing you can have see the attributes as well like you user account expiry date uh, and password changes so these things all you can see in the schema master uh, normally in a most of the companies they don't do any changes for the schema master but yeah there are some places where they do these changes so if they do any changes over here it will reflect in your forest so this is all about the schema master okay next one is domain naming master which is responsible to promote and demote domain controllers and also it is responsible to create add and prevent duplicate name created in the forest so for example like you can see uh, there is two diagram here so the first diagram you can see that there are duplicate name and on the second diagram you can see there is no any duplicate names existing so in this case the first diagram is invalid and the second diagram is valid okay so next one is read master uh, read master stands for relative id master which is responsible to assign unique identification to the objects which is called sid security identification so objects means computer group account uh, user account so these things comes under uh, objects and also uh, to give you a clear understanding about security identification we will take that in a real world scenario you might have driving license or a passport or a national identity card so if you take national identity card in your national identity card you might have a unique id which is only assigned to you this id number you will not find in another person's id card so same thing applies in read master if you create a user account he will have a sid number so this sid number will not be duplicated to a different user account and example if you create an account called Jonathan and he might have a SID number which I'll give an example of how SID number looks like uh, so if that account is deleted and if I create again a same account called Jonathan he will have this time a different SID number so whatever permissions you have given to the previous account will not be reflecting to his new account so always keep keep in mind the permission and rights are associated to his SID number not his username so always keep in mind if anyone resigns from your company or if they are terminated make sure that you have not deleted their user account in case if you delete their user account you will not be able to decrypt certain data which he has encrypted and also read master provides read pool for every domain controller so for example you can see a diagram in DC1 there is read master and in other DC there is read pool created for them one is from 1 to 100 and the DC2 they have from 101 to 200 so what it means that in DC2 they can create they can assign seed number between 1 to 100 and same thing applies to DC3 they can assign seed number to their user account between 101 to 200 so that means whenever they create an account so seed number will be assigned based on these numbers in case if these numbers are finished the domain control will will request from this read master to extend their read pool limit so these things will be done by read master so if you want to see your domain controllers 
read pool. I will show you that one. Okay. So in the domain controller, type command cmd and type the command dc dag forward slash test double colon and type read manager again space forward slash v so here i'll scroll up and here you can see my read pool for this domain which is starting from 2100 to this number so this is the command which you can use to view your read pool Okay, next one is PD simulator, which stands for primary domain controller. This is responsible to synchronize time across the forest. For example, if you connect any domain controllers to your root domain, you will see that your time will be changed according to the root domain. Same thing applies to the client computers. When you're connecting your client computers to the domain, automatically the time will be changed according to the root domain's time. So these things are done by PDC emulator and also PDC emulator replicates password immediately if the password is changed for a user account. So these things are handled by PDC emulator. Okay, so next one is infrastructure master. Infrastructure master is responsible to update user account information when it is moved from a different domain or cross domain it is also important when there is multiple forest or single large forest also it should not be placed in a domain controller which holds global catalog so if any information or any changes made to a user account attributes this information will be replicated to the other domain controllers in the network so for example i will show you the diagram here Okay, here you can see a diagram which I'm going to explain about infrastructure master. So here there are two different forests. One is HTD.local and another one is iNetwork365.local. So in between them, they have something called trust relationship enabled. So in that case, the HTD.local can access iNetwork365 resources and same thing applies to iNetwork as well. They can access HTD.local's resources. So here the administrator what he's going to do, he's going to create an account called user1 and he's going to assign this user1 permission to access iNetwork365 resources. So this information will be passed to Global Catalog server. So Global Catalog is like an address book in Active Directory. It has all the information about the user account. So what will happen? The Global Catalog will update this user1 in its database. So after updating the, use, the information in its database, a phantom record will be sent to none global catalog domain controllers. So here you can see DC2 and DC3 doesn't have global catalog. So in that case, a phantom record will be sent to their domain controllers. So here the DC2 will receive that phantom record and it will request all the details of this user account so this information will be passed to infrastructure master and when the user when he's trying to log into dc3 so the dc3 will request from infrastructure master if this information or else if this user is a valid user account so since infrastructure now has all the information of, about this user one so it will reply saying yes he can log into the account in dc3 so then only DC3 will allow user1 to log in to their system or access their shared resources. In case if the infrastructure master is not working, so then the user account will not be able to log into their domain controller. So this is the main responsibility of infrastructure master. So before I end this video, I need to show you infrastructure master, read master, in the active directory so what i'm going to do i'm going to log into the active directory
Okay. So if I right click on my domain name over here, you can see there is something called change operation master. So if I click this one, you can see I can change rate master, PD simulator, and infrastructure master. So that means I can change them to a different location. Also, please keep in mind all these five roles are already installed in the root domain controller. So if you want to change, you can change them from here. Okay. So guys, that's all about this video and I hope that you guys understood uh, about this F FSMR roles. So on my next video, I will show you how to seize this FSMR roles to a different domain controller. So until then, please sub subscribe, share and like my video.